Namaste. So now we continue with the Aparokshanubhuti. And we pretty much finished the introductory section. And we're going to come to the main topic of the work in these two verses. Om Notpadyate Vinagnanam Vichare Nanya Sadhanai Yata Padartha Bhanam Hi Prakashena Vinakvachit Na Not Upadyate is produced Vina without jnanam self-realization vicharena by inquiry into the self anya other sadhanai means of spiritual cultivation yata just as padhartabhanam knowledge of objects he indeed Prakashena vina, without light, kvachit, anywhere. Self-realization is not brought about by any other means than atma vichara, just as an object is nowhere seen without the help of light. So in this world, we can understand we need light to see. Ignorance is the darkness of space that cuts off the light of the self. And because of that, we need some other form of light, like sunlight, moonlight, or artificial light, fire, or whatever. Otherwise, we can't see anything. The Gita says, talking about the spiritual world, that in that world, there is no need for sun, moon, or electricity. Why? Because everything there is self-effulgent. So in the same way, when we go away from Brahma into individuality, the blackness of ignorance separates us from the light of Brahman. And so we need a light to see, not the material reality, but the spiritual realities. And this is Atma Vichara. Atma means the self, self with a capital S, the self. And vichara means inquiry, investigation, research, looking into things. So we have to look into the nature of things, especially the nature of the self, to understand our real position and what's actually going on so that we can attain self-realization. Now, how does that look? Well, the next few verses, beginning with the immediate next verse, give several examples. Actually, the, most of the rest of the book consists of example inquiries that show how we should inquire into the self. Let's take a look at the next verse. Koham katam midam jatam kovai kartasya vidyate upadanam kimastiha vichara soyami drishaha Koham, who I am, katam, how, idam, this world, jatam, created. Kaha, who, thy, indeed, karta, 
Creator, Usya of this, Vidyate is, Upadanam material, Kim what, Usti is, Iha here in this creation, Vicharaha inquiry, So young that, Idrishaha like this. Who am I? How is this world created? Who is its creator? Of what material is this world made? This is the way of that vichara, inquiry. Now we're all familiar, or we should be familiar, with Ramana Maharshi's teaching that we should ask this question, who am I? But not only that, also, what is this world? How is it created? In Ramana's book, Uladu Narpadu, the very first verse begins with this question, because we see the world, we have to explain to ourselves, how does it exist? How does it come into existence? What maintains it? And how is it destroyed at last? Because after all, what we come to accept as our self with a small s, the material body and the mind, are made of the same things. And if this world is going to perish, well then, so are we. So these are all topics of great material interest to all of us. And so, because uh, most people don't really understand the context of this question, who am I? They get it wrong. Well, first of all, they don't bother to cultivate the prerequisites that we went over in the previous 10 verses. And because of this, their mind is always in turmoil, uh, very confused, and there can't be clarity unless the mind is at peace. Therefore, first of all, the qualifications or prerequisites have to be attained, at least to some degree. Maybe not perfectly, but you know, at least you have to start to cultivate shama, dhamma, titiksha, and so on. Viveka. All these personal qualities that make for a sadhu. Sadhu means someone who is expert. This vichara is not for ordinary people. It's for those who are expert in life, who have reached the highest platform of intelligence. Otherwise, they'll misunderstand and misapply the instructions and get the wrong results, get the wrong answers. So I want to discuss the framework and the context of this question, who am I? First of all, who is asking this question? It is certainly not the ego, because the ego already thinks it knows who it is. The ego thinks, I am the body, I am the mind, I am the various labels and designations attached to the body and mind. I am the possessions related to this body and mind. I am the actions related to this body and mind, and so on. The ego is quite certain of all this. <laughs> so there's no use for the ego to inquire like this. It must be the awakening self who takes a look at the surroundings and realizes that he's in trouble and says, no, wait a minute, this can't be me. Who am I really? 
apart from the body and mind, apart from this world and all the artificial designations and labels, apart from name and form, apart from matter in general, who am I? Because I can see that I'm consciousness. And consciousness cannot be explained by any combination of material elements. Yeah, yeah, I know the scientists say it comes from the brain, but they can't prove it. It's just a theory. If they could make a brain, huh, like a computer or something, that was conscious, there might be some merit to their theory, but they can't. And they won't. Because matter cannot become conscious without spirit, without Brahman. So now the question, who am I, is asked by the self, the real self, with a capital S, who realizes, I'm covered by ignorance. I'm given all kinds of false information about who I am by the world. I want to find out who I really am. So this question is asked by the self in the process of awakening. And the next issue is then, who is this question addressed to? It's not something you ask yourself, who am I? I already know who I am. But the question is addressed to Maya. This is my personal realization. The self is going, wait a minute, this is not me. This is not my life. This is not myself all this material stuff. Who am I really, Maya? Huh? Because this is all Maya. This is all illusion. This is all temporary. So who am I really? See, only Maya can answer this question because she is the one who pulls the wool over our eyes, as the expression goes covers our vision with illusion and darkness of ignorance. So, because we are the self, actually, Maya is our servant. The problem is, in material existence, the self with a small s is Maya's slave. So how do we go from being Maya's slave to being Maya's master? Well, we ask this question, who am I, really? Ramana Maharshi's disciples used to call this uh, Bhagavan's Brahmastra. <laughs> Bhagavan means, of course, it refers to Ramana himself. And Brahmastra is like a nuclear weapon made of mantras. So when uh, someone would get in a discussion and they were uh, clinging to a wrong explanation or something, he would ask this question, then who are you? What are you? Where do you come from? and so on. And so this is the Brahmastra, this is the ultimate weapon. Huh? So in our struggle to find out who we really are, this question, this simple question, who am I, is the ultimate weapon. But only when it is addressed by the self, with a capital S, to Maya, who is the covering agent, then she has to answer truthfully. She has to give the information. She has to reveal 
who we really are. That is why, from the beginning, we take it as an assumption that aham pramasmi, I am Brahman. I am the self. I am Atma or Atman. I am the Absolute. I am pure consciousness. I am beyond all this material stuff, beyond all these limitations. And I have the right to ask who I am and get a straight answer. Because believe me, in the beginning, Maya is going to try to obfuscate this question and give all kinds of wrong answers to keep us in thrall and to test us, to test our determination. Are we really committed to self-realization? Or do we just want a safe, comfortable life with nice material pleasures and so on? So she is going to test us. She's going to find out what we're really made of. And if we pass her test, then very easily she can give the liberation, the moksha, the freedom to be who we really are. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.